Hello, I'm Roger McLaughlin, Chief Executive of the Westerly Group. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to our Christmas Remembrance Service. Now, of course, with COVID, things are much harder to organise this year than in the past. And there was a danger we couldn't have this service at all. But our colleagues, together with our audiovisual partners, Obertus, have come to the rescue. And hence, we're doing this webcast live to you this evening and also recorded for those of you who can't attend at this time. Of course, I mentioned there COVID and it's affected all of us. And much has been written and said about how devastating it's been. And sadly, we have lost many lives. But you know, there has been an awful lot of good come out of this pandemic too. There are heroes in every community, in every walk of life people who really gone the extra mile. And of course, yes, there's all the key workers. NHS have been magnificent, as have been lorry drivers getting food to the supermarkets, teachers who've carried on teaching and looking after the young people. And in every community, there's someone who has gone the extra mile, a real hero, whether they just brought a better smile, whether they've checked on their neighbours, whether they've got shopping for them, or perhaps it's been you making a call to someone who you haven't spoken to for a while. Make more of those calls, especially at Christmas. There's never been a better time to do it. So phone a friend. And of course, if I may, I'd like to thank all our Westerly colleagues who have been magnificent during this pandemic. They have worked tirelessly, all hours with great dedication to provide the love, the exceptional care for absolutely everyone who suffered a bereavement. So tonight, please do enjoy this service. Enjoy the singing, enjoy taking part as much as you can and have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. As manager of Ellsbury Vale Crematorium, I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us in our carol service of remembrance. This year has been a difficult year for so many families with restrictions in these unprecedented times we find ourselves in. And this is therefore reflected in our service here today as we come together to remember our loved ones. There is always pressure around Christmas. Baking, shopping, gift wrapping, writing cards and parties. These and a thousand other tasks and activities add to the stress of the season. We may find we just do not have the energy to do very much because all our resources are being spent on our grieving. Apathy may lead us to feel we do not want to be bothered with anything or anyone. We should ask ourselves two questions. How much can I do? And what do I want to do? Your needs are important now. During other Christmas seasons, you may have spent all your time thinking of the needs and expectations of others. This year, acknowledge your limitations and do what you want. Leave the phrase ought to do out of your holiday vocabulary. Figure out what you should do. Compare it to what you feel able to do. And then find 
an acceptable balance. Christmas can be especially difficult for grieving people. It is traditionally the season to be jolly, the time for family and friends to be together. There are many expectations about how wonderful Christmas should be. And even though we rarely fulfil these expectations, our loved one's absence makes this hope even less likely to become reality. Christmas this year will be a time of many memories. Encourage an honest, open sharing of these memories. It is amazing how often we try to avoid the subject of loss. You may find no one seems to want to mention the fact that your loved one is not present this year. Perhaps it is because they are afraid that someone will get upset or emotional. Yet, it is on everyone's mind. Denying the pain and the difficulty is sometimes harder than facing up to it. Let's be realistic about the fact that this Christmas is different. What we do will reflect, will reflect what is meaningful for us. Perhaps you might acknowledge the person who is missing by lighting a candle at the dinner table and taking a moment of memorial. Let that candle be a celebration of the person's life and a love shared rather than simply a recognition of their death. Perhaps for a time, some will share special memories or stories. Humorous incidents recalled can be a special memory and to have, have a healing quality to them. Try not to ignore the fact that someone is missing this year. To pretend that nothing has happened is so unnatural and actually increases the tension. Don't allow anyone else's expectations to dictate what you should do. Remember that you can be thankful for yesterday, but today is what we have. So look for the joy in each moment. Celebrate what you have as well as realising what you're missing. Don't allow looking back to the past to spoil what you have in the present.
Hello and welcome to everyone here joining in our carol service. We're so grateful for your attendance. Now Christmas can be a magical time of year for many, a time of celebration, togetherness and love. And this year has been particularly difficult for us all, but particularly difficult when you have lost someone. And this time of celebration can be a huge reminder of your loved one's absence. And the biggest gaps appear in the smallest moments, the little chats, the empty chair. But in remembering their life and significance, you will be paying them the biggest tribute. And even though at times it can seem like a huge struggle, it will be these very memories and moments that will help push the pain away and bring back the smiles, even just for a moment. And make sure you take time to restore, replenish and rest. Taking care of you is so very important. And in honour of that, I share a poem called The Mountain. If the mountain seems too big today, then climb a hill instead. If the morning brings you sadness, it's okay to stay in bed. If the day ahead weighs heavy and your plans feel like a curse, there's no shame in rearranging, just don't make yourself feel worse. If a shower stings like needles and a bath feels like you'll drown, if you haven't washed your hair for days, don't throw away your crown. A day is not a lifetime, a rest is not defeat. Don't think of it as a failure, just a quiet, kind retreat. It's okay to take a moment from an anxious, fractured mind. The world will not stop turning while you get realigned. The mountain will still be there when you want to try again. You climb it in your own time and love yourself till then. And I know not all of you will celebrate Christmas in the traditional sense of the world, but whichever festival or holiday you are celebrating this year, May I take this opportunity to wish you all peace, health and happiness. And I hope you are surrounded by love. And remember, be kind to yourself and Merry Christmas. Thank you.
we will now take a moment of reflection to remember those loved ones who have passed, listening to O Holy Night.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went to Bethlehem, the town of David, with his wife Mary, who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. And there were angels living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the angel said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And there came two magi from the east, for they had seen his star. And the star they had seen rose and went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was, and they were overjoyed. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened up their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I hate having a birthday so close to Christmas. Um, certainly when I was younger, um, my gifts were always presented to me as that's for your birthday and Christmas as well, which I wouldn't have minded if it had been a decent present, but it was the same rubbishy stuff I'd have got anyway. I recently celebrated a big birthday and I can't believe how the years have flown. When you're young, you never think you're gonna get old. And I can remember my 21st birthday. It was kind of like yesterday, passing my mum, dad, my nan and grandpa, my aunt and my brother and myself all sat round a big table in a Burnie Inn, if you remember those. It was snowing at the time. And I can see it as clearly as yesterday, like the ghost of Christmas past looking through a frosted window. Where did those years go? And more importantly, where did those people go? The swift passing of the years has washed them all away and my brother and I are now all that's left. But those 40 years have not washed away my memories of them. Only yesterday I discovered something and I thought, oh, I must tell my dad that. Christmas is when we most miss our loved ones. It's always been a gathering time, no, no matter how far from home we are. We know well that first Christmas story of Mary and Joseph taking a 60-mile journey on foot to be with their family. Because those ties of blood and love always call us back together at this time of year, to sit round a table, to share food and to share gifts and to share new stories and to remember old ones. And also to remember those who won't be sharing in all this, that empty chair at the table that leaves a sadness and a shadow. And I think of all the spaces at my table, my mum, my dad, my grandparents, my aunt. I can still see them there in their paper crowns with their glasses full. But now in front of me is my wife, children, my brother, his children, my wife's family, too many now to get round a table, and certainly more than Boris would allow and a granddaughter too. I would love my mum and dad to be able to see this, all these generations gathered together of their making. And I really hope that in some way they are part of this. Certainly um, they'll be remembered as long as I remember them. 
In all my years as a vicar, I must have taken over 200 carol services. Every year I took between a dozen and 20. And to be honest, I hate them. I actually fell asleep while taking a carol service one year, and I've never been allowed to forget that. But right at the beginning of the carol service, you might never have noticed there are these lovely words. Let us remember all those who worship with us today, but in another light and upon a different shore. And that is exactly what we're here to do today. Remember all those loved ones lost, those in another light and on a different shore, those much loved, those who will always be remembered, long remembered and in our hearts will always be with us. And as our memorial service draws to a close, 
I'd like to share a poem entitled, If We Could Bring You Back Again. If we could bring you back again, for one more hour or day, we'd express all our unspoken love, we'd have countless things to say. If we could bring you back again, we'd say we treasured you, and that your presence in our lives meant more than we ever knew. If we could bring you back again, to tell you what we should, you'd know how much we miss you now. And if we could, we would. I would like to thank everyone who has taken part in today's service and also thank you for joining us in this virtual service during these difficult times. I wish you and your families a peaceful Christmas. I would now like to conclude our service with the following poem. I am spending Christmas with Jesus. I see the countless Christmas trees around the world above with tiny lights like heaven's stars reflecting on the snow. The sight is so spectacular, please wipe away that tear, for I'm spending Christmas with Jesus this year. I hear the many Christmas songs that people hold so dear, but the sounds of music can't compare with the Christmas choir up here. For I have no words to tell you, the joy their voices bring, for it is beyond description, 
to hear the angels sing. I can't tell you of the splendour or the peace here in this place. Can you just imagine Christmas with our Saviour face to face? I'll ask him to light your spirit as I tell him of your love. So pray for one another as I lift your eyes above. Please let your hearts be joyful and let your spirit, spirit sing. For I am spending Christmas in heaven and I'm walking with the King. Thank you. i mm-hmm. 